Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Today we're going to take a look at the Argon 1 M.2 case for the Raspberry Pi 4. It includes two full-size HDMI ports, easy access to the GPIO pins, as well as M.2 support. Let's check it out right now. Priced around $45, the Argon 1 M.2 case is not exactly one of the cheapest cases available for the Raspberry Pi 4, however it is rather versatile. I also picked up this M.2 SSD enclosure to connect it to my PC. And if you want to take advantage of the M.2 SATA connection, you might want to pick up a drive similar to this one. I chose the Samsung 500GB M.2. Now let's go ahead and open the box. It does come with a manual, which is pretty good, and apparently there is an infrared receiver, but unfortunately I was unable to locate the remote for this video as it shows it's out of stock. Now I'll quickly flip through the pages of the manual. Feel free to pause it if you want to see any of this. The manual is very well done, has a lot of good information, and steps you through the build process very easily. Now let's take a quick look at the contents. If we peel the cover off the back here, this is what it looks like. Very nice. We'll go ahead and open it up, and there is a small extender board. Notice it does have two full-size HDMI ports, which is nice, and the small adapter for attaching the M.2 drive, which is the bottom portion of the case. And of course, your thermal pads and your screws for the assembly. The case does cool the Raspberry Pi with active as well as passive cooling. And this is the bottom portion where the M.2 drive connects via the USB 3.0 port. Now let's go ahead and assemble it. Looking at the Raspberry Pi 4 itself, you have two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, gigabit ethernet, your GPIO header pins, your display port, your camera port, and on the opposite side, you have your USB-C power right here as well as two micro HDMI ports, your AV port, and if we flip the board over, you will see this is where the micro SD card goes. Now we'll attach the HDMI extender or daughter board. Start with the AV jack, and then gently add a little pressure and go ahead and get those connectors good and seated. Now grab your components pack that includes rubber feet, as well as the thermal pads, and two different size screws, the smallest for the inside and the large for the outside of the case. Now we'll go ahead and remove the cover on the bottom and apply that and remove the plastic on the top as well and repeat the same for the other location here for the heat sink. Don't forget to remove the top plastic cover. There we go. Now you want to go ahead and align the very back connectors and also the GPIO pins. Make sure everything lines up and gently press down, making sure not to bend any of the pins. Now we can go ahead and apply the screws here, here, and also over here and right here. So I'll go ahead and speed through and do that real quick. So you have a total of four of the small screws that hold the PCBs down into the case. Just verify that pins 1 and 2 are jumpered here. And now we're ready to install the M.2 SSD drive. So again, here's the 500 gigabyte SSD M.2. I'll go ahead and remove it. On the bottom of the case, you'll first want to remove this small screw. So go ahead and get your Phillips head screwdriver and remove it. Then slide the M.2 drive into the slot. And gently press down and go ahead and Put the screw back in, that'll hold it down into place just fine. And that's pretty much it as far as the M.2 drive. To install PiOS to a micro SD, go to raspberrypi.org, then click on the software link, scroll down a little bit until you see the Raspberry Pi imager. Go ahead and click it for your operating system. Download, install, and launch the application, and you'll see this. We'll click Choose OS, and we'll select Raspberry Pi OS 32 bit. Then we'll click the Choose SD Card button, and this one happens to be 16 gig, so I'll select that. 
and then click the right button and it will ask you to verify if it's okay to erase it and click yes and the image of Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit will be written to the micro SD card. Once complete, click the continue button and close out of the Raspberry Pi imager. And I'm going to start out with a fresh copy of Pi OS and I'm going to put it on the micro SD because we're going to use that to boot for the first time and then we'll set up the SSD. So I'm going to go ahead and put the cover back on. Now we'll go ahead and put the rubber feet on the case. So you just simply peel the little pieces off and go ahead and put it on all four corners here. And I'll just speed through this real quick. And now we can install the long screws. It's up to you if you want to do that at this point. Since I will be temporarily booting from a micro SD, I'll have to remove them all. Now we'll go ahead and plug in the adapter, just like this. Now we're ready to plug everything in and start our first boot. One thing that's really cool about the Argon One cases is that you don't lose access to the GPIO header pins. In fact, it's got a magnetic cover that easily pops right onto the case. The kit does not include a power supply, so you will need to get one of those. It does have a full-size HDMI, so we'll go ahead and plug that into the far left port. Here I'm going to use the official Raspberry Pi 4 keyboard and mouse and go ahead and plug it into one of the USB 2.0 ports and now we'll power it on. When it first starts up it'll resize the file system and then Pi OS will start up. Next I'm going to show you how to install Pi OS Imager directly under Pi OS so you can set up your SSD. After installing all the latest updates we'll click restart. Once restarted we'll open the Chromium web browser and then go to raspberrypi.org, click on software, and when you scroll down, you'll find the command we need to execute in the terminal in order to install Raspberry Pi Imager. So we'll copy that to the clipboard, open a terminal, right-click and paste the command in, sudo apt install rpi imager, press enter, and once prompted, press y, and enter again, and it will download and install it to your Raspberry Pi. I'll go ahead and close out of this browser and then we'll click the Raspberry Pi icon, go to accessories, and here you'll find Raspberry Pi Imager. So we'll go ahead and click it and select Choose OS. And in this case I'm going to select Emulation and Game OS and select Recall Box. Under Recall Box we want to select the one for the Raspberry Pi 4 or 400 where it says Choose SD Card. We'll select our SSD drive and click right. You will then be prompted if you wish to erase everything on the SSD. Go ahead and say yes, enter a password if needed, and after a short period of time, the operating system will be installed to the Raspberry Pi. Click the continue button and go ahead and close out of Raspberry Pi Imager. And now we're going to shut down. So go to logout, shut down. Once shut down, Remove the power, go ahead and open the bottom of the case and remove the micro SD. Then put everything back together again. Press the power button on the case. And now we are booting into Recall Box directly from the M.2 SSD. I have not found any shielding issues in using Wi Fi with Recall Box on this particular case. If you'd like to learn more about Recall Box, check out this video. Now we're going to check out an M.2 SSD enclosure. Having one of these is completely optional, totally up to you, but it does make it handy for installing your operating systems. So if you want to, just take your M.2 SSD, go ahead and pop it over this tab. Once properly seated, you want to take the top cover and go ahead and slide it over the M.2 SSD enclosure. There is a USB-C connection into the enclosure, so go ahead and connect that. And on the opposite end, you have a USB Type-A. So you just plug that into your computer. And again, we can go into Raspberry Pi Imager. Go ahead and select a different operating system. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and select RetroPie. And select the one for the Raspberry Pi 4 and 400. Then click the Choose SD Card and select your SSD. And go ahead and click Write. Once the write is complete, 
go ahead and reinstall the M.2 drive back into the Argon 1 case and power it up. It will then expand the file system once again and boot into RetroPie. And from here, you simply set up your controllers, copy your games and your BIOS files, and go ahead and set up your Wi-Fi connection, and everything seems to work rather well with this case. I had no trouble at all using RetroPie with the M.2 SSD case. For more information on RetroPie, check out my video on the RetroPie 4.6 for the Raspberry Pi 4, as well as the 10 tips that will help you get the most out of RetroPie. Next, we'll make a brief comparison between the original Argon 1 case and the Argon 1 M.2. On the bottom, there's not much to speak of, except they are magnets for fingerprints. <laughs> the M.2 case has full-size HDMI versus micro HDMI ports. Unfortunately, when you install the USB-C U adapter, you will lose access to one of your USB-C ports. With the original Argon 1 case, you had direct access to the micro SD card, but that is not true on the new Argon 1 M.2 case. You'll have to open the case in order to get access to it. And just to make sure it's clear, yes, you have two available USB 3.0 ports on the original case and only one accessible on the new case. You may also find, due to the size of the adapter, that you may have trouble connecting up some USB thumb drives, such as this one. I just wanted to make you aware of some of the shortcomings of this case. If you already own the original Argon 1 case, you can also opt for this expansion board only solution, which at the present time is only $20 and might be a good option for you. I also tried the case using Berry Boot to load up multiple operating systems off the M.2 SSD, and it worked very well. I also want to make you aware if you go to wagnerstechtalk.com, go to Tutorials, Raspberry Pi, and then select the Argon 1 Review and Tips you'll come to this page. Here you'll find some additional how-to information on the Argon 1 case, such as how to install the scripts. I'm going to copy and paste the command here. I'll press enter and it will download and install the scripts to be able to handle safe shutdown and configuration of your fans. It will create two icons on the desktop. If you double click it and click execute in terminal, you'll see this. Simply just press Y to continue and you can customize its operation however you wish. You can also install the stress command by selecting this, copy and paste into a terminal window, press enter, and it'll go out and download and install stress. Using that, you can run a stress test to get the temperature of the case up to a level where the fans will kick in. For example, listen carefully. I hope I've provided enough information to help you get set up with your Argon 1 M.2 case if you so choose to purchase one. While there are some improvements that could be made, it does the job rather well. I particularly like having access to the GPIO header pins on the top magnetic cover. I also like the full-size HDMI ports. The ability to install a B key or B plus M key SSD is fantastic. I will place affiliate links in the description below for everything you've seen here. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to see more from Wagner's Tech Talk, please click the subscribe. And with that, I will talk to you very soon.